All right, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about high performance database queries in WordPress. A little bit less general interest than the last talk. Uh, I would say, like, you know, so it's targeted at developers, and I would say on the scale it's like intermediate to advanced. Uh, if you feel like that's really not in your interest, I won't be offended if you walk out or take a nap. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Boynes. I'm a partner at Pally. Uh, and here's the URL to the slides at the bottom. It's mboynes.github.io slash WC Portland 2018. Uh, this is a talk I gave at WordCamp Portland in this last year. Um, I think I only see one familiar face from in there, so hopefully this will be new subject matter to anyone left who is interested. Uh, briefly, a little bit about Alley. We're a full-service digital agency. We're one of WordPress.com VIP's uh, partner agencies, and we're hiring. So uh, if you happen to find this interesting, then please come talk to me. I know nobody's raised their hands that they're looking for a job, but I don't know, maybe your coworkers are right next to you. You don't want to admit to that. Uh, all right, so let's, let's dive right in here. Um, what makes a database query fast or slow? Uh, this is an answer I cribbed from the O'Reilly book, High Performance MySQL 3rd Edition. Uh, it's electrifying, if, you know, you're into that sort of thing. Uh, so the most basic reason a query doesn't perform well is because it's working with too much data. It goes on to say, some queries can't be helped. Some queries just have to sift through a lot of data and can't be helped. That's unusual though, most bad queries can be changed to access less data. Uh, so, pretty basic answer, but it, it really speaks volumes. What is the most basic way to speed up a database query? Reduce the amount of data that the database has to read. That's not to say reduce the amount of data in your database. The last time I did that, my client was not happy with me. Uh, you want to reduce the amount of data that the database server has to read to access the information that you ultimately want to get to. Uh, let's just uh, define some shared concepts before we, we really dive into uh, how, we, how we do that. Um, so first are indexes, uh, and I, I promise this is not just, I cribbed high performance MySQL 3rd edition for the whole presentation, this is the last thing from there. So uh, specifically in B-treat indexes, uh, which is what MySQL uses, indexes reduce the amount of data that the server has to examine. They help the server to avoid sorting in temporary tables, and they turn a random I.O. into sequential I.O. Uh, are there any downsides to indexes? Sure. Uh, they uh, slow down write operations, because every time you write to the database that has an index, uh, then the index has to be written to as well. They require more storage space, they use up more memory, and just generally speaking, indexes aren't very flexible. They're pretty targeted to a specific query or a, sub or a group of queries that's looking at uh, specific data. And we'll talk uh, quite a bit about indexes, so um, that'll hopefully start to make more sense if it doesn't yet. Uh, talking about some of the indexes specific in WordPress's database, uh, especially targeted at querying for database posts, uh, there's a, a primary key, which is just on the ID field. There's uh, an index on the post name field, which is uh, mainly used for rewrite rules for looking at posts by their slug. The next one's really important. We'll talk quite a bit about this. It's type status date. It's a multi-column index, and uh, you can see up there it's on the post type, post status, post date, and ID fields in that order. Uh, when it come to, comes to indexes, the uh, or multi-column indexes, the column order matters. So type, status, date, ID. Uh, next, there's an index on post parent. That's for uh, getting children of parent posts, so hierarchical queries. And lastly, there's an index on post author, which drives the author archive pages. The next table, WP Post Meta, there are three indexes here. There's the Meta ID, which we as developers don't interact with really. Then there's an index on Post ID and an index on Meta Key. What's uh, important to note here is what's missing. There's no index on Meta Value. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And uh, lastly, the WP Term Relationships table. So this is the table in the database that connects posts and other objects, but for our purposes, posts and 
taxonomy terms. And so here there are two in indexes. The first one, the primary index, is a multi-column index on the object ID and term taxonomy ID. And then the second is uh, just on the term taxonomy ID. OK, so joins. If uh, you've been a developer working with MySQL for a long time, you might have the impression that joins are evil. They're non-performant. Are they always bad? No. But they certainly can be. Join order is important, as is proper indexing, making sure that you're joining on index columns. And many joins can cause a lot of CPU overhead. So behind the scenes, or I should say under the hood in MySQL, uh, when MySQL is, is running a join, it's using nested loops to, uh, to make those joins. So for each join in a query, there is another level of nesting in the loop. Uh, so for you, uh, Order of N nerds, uh, you can do the math on that, it's not pretty. Okay, uh, let's look at what WordPress does in its queries from WP Query. Uh, so the first type of query, th these I call archive queries. Um, this is the most common and most basic type of query for posts in WordPress. If you were to spin up a new WordPress site, go to the home page, it'll show your 10 latest posts. This is the type of query that's generating that page. So these, these queries get run a lot. Uh, they filter by post type, post status, and then they order by date. So remember that type, status, date, index. That's where it comes into play. Uh, hopefully this is readable to everyone, uh, but I'll walk through it if it's, if it's not. What the database query, we'll ignore some of the stuff in here, but what the query is doing is selecting the ID it's not selecting every field in the post table, it's just getting the ID from the post table where the post type is post, the post status in this case is published or private because when I pulled this query off of a website I was signed into it, hence the private, but uh, just pay attention to the post status part and then it's ordering by date. So uh, remember, type, status, date, ID, that multi-column index those are the only four fields that we're looking for here. So when WordPress runs this query, MySQL doesn't have to actually touch the database table at all. It can get all the information it needs from the index so it can run this very, very quickly. I, for the purposes of this presentation, I created a, a site, put 100,000 posts in it, ran this query, and it took about 73 milliseconds to run, so 0 0.073 seconds. So, you know, that's pretty fast to look at 100,000 posts. But at the same time, that's not really that fast. I would expect it to be faster. So why is it so slow? We can do an explain on this query and get a vague idea. Uh, skipping towards the bottom, MySQL had to look at 49,702 rows in order to deliver our result set. And if there's one thing you pull away from this talk, it is that limits do not reduce the amount of data that MySQL has to look at to give you a result set. So you're saying, what the heck, I only wanted 10 posts, why did you have to look at 49,702? It's because in order to do that sorting and give you the top 10, it still had to figure out enough information about the rest of them to roll them out. So if we, uh, so, so what, Ultimately, the reason why MySQL had to do that is because of the order and the limit. So if we remove the order and the limit from that query, it only takes four milliseconds to run. Of course, it gives back 100,000 results, but it only takes four milliseconds to run. So uh, we can determine here that of the 73 milliseconds, 69 of those milliseconds was required just to do the, the sorting and then to slice off the, the first 10. So the query itself is very fast sorting it is relatively slow. Which begs the question, to me anyway, can we save time by sorting that data in PHP? So have MySQL give us all 100,000 results and then do that sorting and slicing ourselves? Uh, well, I'm very glad that you asked that. I tried it out. And just to deliver the data necessary to do that took longer than 73 milliseconds to deliver that data over a local connection. So there's no web traffic involved, database server, web server on the same machine. It took longer than that just to collect that data. And all told, it took about 14 times longer to do it myself. 
So my SQL's doing a pretty good job there. Uh, but we can still optimize that, so we'll come back to that. Uh, next, let's look at taxonomy queries. Taxonomy queries can get a bad rap in the high-performance WordPress world. So, uh, you know, what, why is that? What's going on there? Typical taxonomy queries use index columns. They use a single join. At least a basic single taxonomy query uses a single join. Join happens on an index column. Let's look at what that query looks like. Pretty similar to the last one, except now we've added a join in there, and the join is happening on uh, the wp-post.id is equal to wp term relationships.object ID, and then the first part of the word clause where it says and wp term relationships.term taxonomy ID in two. Um, that's what's limiting the result set down to the posts that are in this term. Uh, so on my site with 100,000 posts, I put all 100,000 of them in this uh, taxonomy term to see how long this would take, and it took about 200 milliseconds. So you know, close to three times slower than the than the last um, the last query, even though it's returning the same result set. What if we did multiple taxonomies? So we're going to add a join, and uh, then you can see in the where clause there's an additional row, and tt one turn taxonomy ID in nine. So uh, in this case, so I have 100,000 posts in the uh, turn taxonomy ID two, and I have one post in turn taxonomy ID nine. So we've added a join. We learned earlier that causes CPU overhead, so that's going to add a little bit of time. The last query was 200 milliseconds. Anyone have a guess of how long this one's going to take? This took about one millisecond. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? The uh, reason is that MySQL didn't have to do any sorting here. There was just one result. So even though we've made the query more complex, we've added another join, MySQL still hasn't had to leave indexes. And in the end, what was taking the most time in that first query, we don't have to deal with here. There's no sorting. We just have one result, so MySQL can just deliver it to us. So what was going on with the last one? Why was that 200 milliseconds instead of 73 milliseconds, like you know the very first query? Well, it's still sorting, but now MySQL has more data to deal with when it's sorting because it has that join. So it's still working only in indexes, but it's working with two indexes instead of one. So it has to bounce back and forth between them when it's doing its sorting and it has more data to work with. Therefore, it takes longer. Uh, but it's just goes to show you that taxonomy queries don't have to be slow. They can be really quick. It all depends on you know, how that query is crafted. Let's move on to meta queries. Uh, so a typical meta query leverages index columns, uh, meta key, post ID. The join happens on index columns. The meta value is not indexed, at least out of the box. And that query looks pretty similar to the taxonomy query. Uh, we're joining on the post meta table on wppost.id equals wppostmeta.postid. And then in the where clause, we have a couple of lines. Uh, MySQL checks first where the meta key is, in this case, city, and the meta value is uh, Portland. Again, this was a presentation I made for WordCamp Portland, so I didn't bother changing that. Uh, and the rest of this looks similar to what we looked at before. Uh, so in this uh, meta key, meta value combo, I added 99,999 posts. So let's see how long that took. It took about 410 milliseconds. Uh, so slower than the, the taxonomy query. And um, we can probably start to make some guesses as to why that is. Let's look at another, uh, I guess I didn't write up a similar query, but so 99,999 posts in this. And then in the 100,000th post, I put the city as being <laughs> Boston. And when I did that, that query, one result, 340 milliseconds. So on the taxonomy query, when we whittled it down to one result, it took one millisecond. This time, when we whittled it down to one result, it's taking 340 milliseconds. So what gives there? 
Well, we have an unindexed column here where the meta value is Portland. So what MySQL does is whittles down the result set to the smallest set that it can using indexed values. So in that case, in this case, it is what we know our type status date, or you know, type status are really what are what are whittling the result set down. And then the meta key is also an indexed value. So MySQL will, will take that into account. And once it's applied all of that, all of those filters, it's reduced the results set down from 100,000 posts to 100,000 posts because there are still 100,000 posts with the meta key of city in existence. And then for all of those, for the, for the rest of those results, it goes back and forth between the index and the database table and says, what's the meta value? Portland, okay, you're gonna be in the results set. What's the meta value? Portland, okay, you're in the results set. What's the meta value? Boston, you're not in the results set. Keeps going back and forth 100,000 times. So on the second query, where there's only one matching value, there's no sorting happening, so we reduce the query time by about 70 milliseconds, which is consistent with what we've seen before and the amount of time it takes MySQL to sort data. Uh, but even though there's one result, it still has to do all that work back, going back and forth with the meta value to check, does this meta value match the meta value in the query? So uh, points out the importance of an index. So when it comes to meta queries, a query is either fast or slow based on the uniqueness of the meta key, because that is the index field. So if we were to change this, this whole scenario around, where instead of there only being one match to the meta value of Boston, there's only one post with the meta key of city, that only takes one millisecond. which uh, leads to this idea of planning and data architecture. When thinking about some of these database queries, it's really important to know thy data, especially tomorrow's data. As a developer, when I'm building a site on my laptop, I might only put 10 articles in the database for a given taxonomy term, but in the real world, it may end up accumulating a million articles over time. I have to make sure that I'm planning for that and I'm expecting that so that I can, I can architect things appropriately. And for cases where you're working on an open source plugin, you just always have to assume the worst because people will figure out whatever that worst is. Uh, and briefly before we, uh, before we go into fixing these problems we've identified, uh, let's talk about search queries. Simply put, in WordPress, search queries are not scalable. If you have like single thousands of articles on a site, then the, uh, the search will be plenty sufficient. But once you get into tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or more, uh, the search queries slow down pretty much to a halt. So for large sites, you really need to use something external. That might be Elasticsearch, it might be Solar, it might be a third-party search service. Uh, there are even WordPress plugins that will create uh, database tables in MySQL to index data and do more performant queries. Some other option, um, but for large sites, again, you just have to use something external. Okay, let's get into refactoring, fixing some of these queries that we've seen. Uh, so one of the first things uh, that I like to approach as a, as a general fix-all is adding date annotations to some queries. In that, uh, that first query that we looked at, the, you know, just a, a general date query, it's returning 10 posts out of a result set of 100,000. How can we whittle down that 100,000 to a smaller number so MySQL can then have less information to, to sort? As an example, imagine a widget that shows like your 10 latest posts in a sidebar. If you add a date query to the query that powers that widget with some sort of a safe range, you will whittle that result set down. Uh, so again, imagine the scenario where you have 100,000 articles on the site. Chances are, except in my demo site, uh, chances are those 100,000 articles weren't all written in the past week. Maybe your site generates 10 articles per day. So if you add a date query of 
give me all the posts from the last week, or give me the first 10, the 10 most recent from the past week, then MySQL might whittle the results it down to 100 posts, or, you know, 70 if you're really averaging 10 per day, and then from there it can sort and cut off the, the top 10, and that's gonna take virtually no time at all for MySQL to do. So here's what that might look like in code. Uh, so if you had, uh, I'm gonna my cursor over here. So if you had your, the rest of your query here, you could add uh, the date query to it, and then uh, date query accepts a, an after parameter, which allows you to use uh, you know, some weird version of English to specify a date range. Uh, I personally like using date math here, so you can type negative six months, and that would say, the last six months, or you could type negative one week and it would say the last one week. Uh, so next, talking about the meta queries, since those were the slowest of the batch that we looked at, uh, you could add an index to meta value to speed up that query that we were looking at before. Uh, rather than uh, just display their code, I have a link here, uh, and I can, again, give you the link to these slides. Uh, this is courtesy of WordPress.com VIP, and uh, if you follow that link, it's uh, just a uh, very simple WordPress plugin in GitHub that adds an index to the post meta table, and it's a multi-column index of meta key and the first hundred characters of meta value. You can't just add an index to meta value, like as is, because uh, it is a long text field in MySQL, which means that you can, in each row, of the database put about four gigabytes of data in the meta value field. That would be a lot of data to index. So uh, MySQL doesn't let you add, in, add a, full, uh, a full field index to that column. You can specify the first so many characters. And if you're ever going to be querying on a meta value, uh, 100 characters should be more than sufficient. It is an arbitrary number that they chose, but still it seems to work out. It's a good balance. Uh, next for solving the meta query problem is get creative with your meta keys because as we talked about uh, a meta query is only as fast as its meta keys are unique unless you've added an index like we looked at previously uh, so limit cardinality and uh, you know as a, as a fictitious example think about post relationships you have a, a post and you want to say these three posts are related to it Previously, you might think about storing that data as a meta key related post and the meta value being the post ID that is related. So you might have like three rows like that per post uh, in, the, in the meta uh, database table. So instead of taking that approach, you might instead put the ID in the meta key. And so let's say that I'm on post uh, 333 the data that I store might be stored in key related underscore post underscore one, two, three, four, five. Since relationships are typically reciprocal, I might also store uh, a meta value in post one, two, three, four, five with related underscore post underscore three, three, three. And then I can say, give me all the posts related to one, two, three, four, five by querying for against the key related underscore post underscore one, two, three, four, five. And I'll get all the posts that match that. And it'll be really fast unless there are, of course, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of results related to posts one, two, three, four, five. As was mentioned at the beginning of the talk, sometimes slow queries just can't be helped. Sometimes you have to look at a lot of data. And so when you do, the obvious go-to answer is going to be caching. Uh, WordPress provides a couple of cache APIs. The one that I recommend for this is the transients API because transients are guaranteed to be persistent whether you have a persistent object cache or not. And uh, here's just a, a, a rough run through of what that code might look like. Uh, so you get the transient. If it's not there, then run your query. Uh, I would recommend only querying for the IDs because that's much easier to cache rather than just caching the full objects, which could cause problems depending on your cache system. It could be too much data and could end up corrupting the cache. Uh, it could also lead to caching stale data because you're caching things that you weren't really intending to cache. Uh, so just caching the IDs and then inflating them later, like I'm doing here with get post. 
And so in this case, I'm just caching this for 10 minutes, and my slow query is only going to be a problem once every 10 minutes. Ideally, you would cache indefinitely and then only clear when the data changes. So rather than cache for 10 minutes, you could just leave that parameter off and then uh, WordPress fires this action clean post cache whenever a, uh, a post gets updated in some capacity. Maybe it's meta gets updated, maybe it's term, taxonomy terms get updated, or maybe the post itself gets updated. And so you hook into that. You you know, run some logic determining if the cache should clear, and then uh, if so, then you delete your transient. And so if you take this approach, then your cache could persist for like a year, and then instead of having one unlucky user every 10 minutes, you have one unlucky user every however long it takes, a year maybe. And if you want to avoid the unlucky user at all, you could uh, pre-warm your cache. Uh, one approach for this would be to kick off an asynchronous task, uh, so uh, in this case, whenever a post saves, I would schedule a WP cron task to warm the cache, and then uh, on the warm cache action, I would run whatever my laborious query is and then cache the results. I know I have no unlucky users. Uh, next, um, probably should have clustered this with the other meta query optimizations. For the next time I get this up, I guess. Uh, so convert meta queries to taxonomy queries. As we saw earlier, taxonomy queries are generally speaking a little bit faster than meta queries and they have more uh, performance potential, uh, especially through scale. So uh, sometimes meta may make more sense as a taxonomy for the purposes of querying. And uh, don't let your admin presentation influence your storage needs. You can have hidden taxonomies that the, the person using the WordPress admin has no idea that something is a taxonomy. They're just interacting with a meta box the same way that they always have, you know, a select drop down or whatever. So my fictitious example, when we were looking at the meta queries where, uh, you know, my <coughs> meta key was city and then my meta values were Portland and Boston, those actually seem more like taxonomy terms to me. And again, I don't need to add a, you know, a menu item in the WordPress menu for um, cities. I don't need to add a way to manage that. I can just keep the UI the same as it always was in the meta box. Um, so don't let the admin presentation influence how you really need to store and interact with data. Uh, and then uh, the, the last optimization I'll, I'll mention is, you know, again, if you've hit a situation where you really just, there's no optimizing a query, there's no way you can whittle the result set down that MySQL has to look at, uh, is to uh, offload that work to something that might be a little bit better at doing it. Uh, so Elasticsearch is one such software. Sometimes MySQL just isn't well suited for the job. Uh, Elasticsearch is a dedicated search engine and uh, everything that we were looking at today was a search. It's a structured search, it's not a keyword search. When people think of search, they think of like Google, like I enter my search term in a box and then get results. But searches are also structured and we say, give me 10 posts where the post type is this and the post status is that. That's still a search and Elasticsearch is just inherently better at it. It's not as good at other things that MySQL does, so I'm not saying that, you know, WordPress needs to ditch MySQL and adopt Elasticsearch instead, but it is better at some of this stuff that we've been looking at. Uh, so a number of years ago, I put together a couple of open source plugins uh, to interact with Elasticsearch. One is called SearchPress, which uh, indexes your content in Elasticsearch, and then uh, also replaces the front end keyword search on the site. With, uh, with being powered by Elasticsearch. And then the second one is called ESWP Query. That's a drop-in replacement for WP Query that uh, you can take all the same API arguments that you would query for posts with WP Query, but instead, behind the scenes, it follows it through Elasticsearch. Uh, so you don't have to know anything about Elasticsearch in order to use that. And uh, that's it. So uh, I'll open it up for questions and mention again that, uh, you know, if this was interesting to you and uh, you want to work with a group of uh, like-minded professionals who uh, really enjoy challenges and challenging each other, we are pretty much always hiring. So check us out at alley.co. So any questions?
I made the mistake of going to Tate before this. And hyper-caffeinated beverages. <laughs> I went through that faster than I would have expected. Yes? What do I use for a database engine? Uh, well, I don't host sites myself. Uh, so on my laptop, I use MariaDB, which is uh, a, a drop-in replacement for MySQL. Um, I think that's pretty much what all of my clients end up using too. Uh, we host sites primarily on uh, WordPress.com, VIP, on um, Pantheon, and on WP Engine. And I'm pretty sure that all three use MariaDB behind the scenes. Is that what you mean, or do you mean like the table engine? Uh, you know, actually, I forget what WordPress runs these days. Does anyone remember? I don't change it myself. I just let WordPress install. You can change it yourself. You can, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't, personally. Because you can to speed depending on that database. Yeah, you certainly can. Uh, but again, I don't, I don't remember. Do you remember off the top of your head what WordPress installs the tables as? Yeah, that's, uh, those are good points. So uh, the suggestion here oops, uh, is to look at the database engine that's installed in, in your version of MySQL or MariaDB because uh, uh, between, uh, between the different database engines, there are different database, uh, there are different optimizations that you can make. That's a pretty low level optimization. So that's when like really nothing else has worked for you, I think. Thanks, that's a great question. Anyone else? Then I think we get to go home early. Thank you, everyone.